one uh, MBA 300. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and see how we adjust to this online uh, delivery. I have taught online uh, some courses before, uh, but I'm not sure if you have experience online uh, instruction. Uh, so in order for online instruction to work, um, it has to be uh, an open communication. So any questions that you have, please, please ask at any time. Um, and um, we, uh, I'll try to respond as soon as possible. We're trying to prepare for our exam two, which includes chapter four and chapter six. Um, and I kind of wanted to, or had promised to uh, work over the overall loss on a construction or long-term uh, revenue recognition uh, using the percentage of completion. So I have this example from your um, assignment and I, I looked at the assignments and I noticed that you guys had already submitted, I think it was due today. Uh, but you know, I just wanted to make sure that we iron any um, issues that you may have or questions that you may have about this overall loss recognition on the construction contract. So in this example, we have our construction company and they enter into a three-year construction uh, of a bridge for $8.3 million. This is kind of like the one we were uh, looking at in class, uh, but this one it just has different numbers and I kind of worked it out on the Excel spreadsheet. So our uh, contract price is the $8.3 million. And then uh, we have a starting 2021, extending to 2023, when the contract will be fully completed. So we notice uh, that uh, in 2021, uh, we have a gross profit for this project. And in 2022, uh, we actually have a loss okay so basically our actual plus estimated costs um, will or, or have exceed exceeded um, our contract price of 8.3 million so we're expecting a loss of 150,000 for the entire project since uh, we realized this loss for the entire project uh, we are to recognize the loss um, in the current year um, so what we're seeing here is we um, actually go ahead and um, calculate the revenue. Uh, so the 8.3 times our percentage of completion of 55.6% less the 2,811,290. And that's how we arrive at the 1,805,278. Now we have to overall the cumulative uh, loss for this project should be 150,000. So we kind of have to wipe out the gross profit that we recognized in the previous year. So in order to do that, instead of using the 2.6 million of actual cost figure, we are going to kind of plug this difference in order to come up with a cumulative loss of 150,000. And, uh, and then for year three, um, it's just we're using actual figures. And so we come out with 150,000 and cumulative loss will be 300,000. And that's the um, actual uh, loss for this project overall uh, throughout the three years. I also included um, the journal entries. Uh, for um, the three years, okay? So we can see that on our construction in progress, we are debiting the actual cost. Uh, like in 2022, uh, the cost that we had to plug in in order to come out to cumulative loss of 150000 was $2,666,568. Uh, but we're actually debiting the actual amount of um, cost in, uh, for this construction project that we had in 2022. 
Uh, however, when we are recognizing the loss, we are uh, debiting construction expense of two million six hundred and sixty-six five sixty-eight, and then we're crediting construction in progress rather, rather than debiting uh, because we have a loss. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, the points that I wanted to bring to your attention. Uh, in addition, so basically the income statement for the three years, I don't have uh, the years here, but the income statement for the three years will be uh, this uh, shown here. Uh, so year one, we will report 711290 Year two, we would report a loss of 861290 And in 2003, we'll report a loss of 150000 Then on the balance sheet, uh, on the balance sheet, we have our accounts receivables, a uh, net of any cash that was received. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. I have an accounts receivable T account. I also have a construction in progress account uh, and a billings account. So once a project is completed, we know that we're going to have to have a closing entry, so in 2023, we'll have to close the CIP and Billings account. So we're going to debit Billings uh, for the 83, uh, 8.3 million. And then we're going to credit uh, CIP for the 8.3 million again. And that will actually close these accounts to zero. So this entry is only made on the final year. Okay. All right. And so for accounts receivable in year one, we have 250000 which is the 2.6 that we debited to the account, plus or minus the collections. Um, this, I'm sorry, this should read... 2022 without the L and uh, for construction in progress uh, we had uh, the 2.1 plus this uh, 711,290 of gross profit in year one so we have 2,811,290 for construction in progress minus our billing so in this case billings was less than CIP so we ended up reporting the net amount in uh, the balance sheet. But in year two, uh, the, it was actually the opposite. Um, our billings was higher than CIP. And so we are reporting the net amount under liabilities. So I hope that this uh, kind of clarifies um, you know, any questions that you may have about the recognition of overall loss. If we have a loss uh, just only for that period of time, we don't have to do any plug figures. We just report the loss for that period of time. But we know that overall we're going to have a gross profit for the entire project. But if it's overall loss for the project, then we need to uh, do this uh, plug figure to come out to the cumulative loss recognition. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, like I said, please let's uh, maintain the um, open communications. Uh, you're also required to complete the practice exam today by 12.30. Uh, you know, I believe that I allowed for study attempts on the practice exam so you can go back and review your answers. You should have complete answers uh, for the practice exam questions that you missed. If you still have questions about that, please let me know. And then uh, we'll continue as we have already set up our exam for March 30th. Uh, so the, the exam will be completed online. So uh, it will either, it more than likely will be in Connect. Um, so so please uh, just uh, go ahead and continue uh, studying through the spring break, and uh, we'll have I'll give you um, I'll send you further instructions in regards or in preparation for exam two.
Okay, any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We can also, you know, arrange for a Zoom or a FaceTime or Skype meeting. You know, if there's any other uh, ways that you think we should communicate, we can even have a WhatsApp. I'm open to that. Um, just let me know whatever's easier for you. Actually, I kind of like the idea of WhatsApp, but I don't know if you want to share your phone number with me anyways, but <laughs> I don't mind sharing mine with you. So just uh, let me know what works for you and uh, you know we'll do whatever we can to make this work and complete this semester um, as projected. Okay. Uh, thank you for listening and you know what is good about the uh, video lectures is that you can pause me as any time you want to uh, you don't have to sit there <laughs> kind of doze off um, so uh, hopefully you know if you're cannot have a hard time going to sleep then you can just play me and uh, you go right to sleep <laughs> okay so please stay safe uh, and hope to talk to you soon okay bye